Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my boyfriend move into my house with his nephew even temporarily? Swan 23 female inherited my grandparents' house and land last year. I'd rather have my grandparents back, but at least I'm set up with a good place to live out of college and don't have to worry about housing like a lot of my friends. I've been seeing my boyfriend Adam, 24 male, for a year and a half now, and we've been planning to move in together this summer. He would be moving to my place as right now he lives in an apartment with three roommates. Now, Adam has an older brother that is kind of a POS. He and his girlfriends are addicts and have been involved in shady stuff in the past. So, Adam only talks to them on holidays usually. They have a son, 5 male, that Adam sends birthday cards and gifts to, but hasn't spent a whole lot of time around because of the family drama. Then, a couple of weeks ago, the worst happened, and a girlfriend died. And Adam's brother is going to be in jail probably for a very long time. Adam's mom is disabled and not in a good enough health to keep up with a 5-year-old full-time, and girlfriend's family apparently disowned her and want nothing to do with it. So, that leaves Adam as a guardian for the kid or foster care. I am not a kid person. I don't dislike kids, but I had my own messed up childhood, and I would not be a good parent or be able to deal with the noise and chaos of a small kid easily. Adam knows this, as we've had the what if there's an oops and future planning conversations. So, I was surprised when Adam asked about moving plans up for us to live together so that he would have space to take in his nephew. I said I wasn't okay with him bringing his nephew, and that since the situation had changed, the plan would have to be put off until something was figured out. He said there's no room for his nephew at his current place, and rent is sky high, so he wouldn't be able to afford a new place on his own. My place has plenty of room and would be perfect, and this is literally the difference between his nephew staying with family and going God knows where. We argued, and his mom has been calling me to beg me to let them stay with me for a while until they can make other arrangements. I have a feeling that a little while would turn into permanently once the kid got comfortable. Mutual friends have been telling me I'd be an a-hole for not helping Adam, at least temporarily because I'm lucky to have the space. But I really don't want my space invaded like that, and I have to deal with kicking them out eventually if nothing else comes up. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Doesn't CPS usually look to all the child's relatives? His mother's family may have disowned her, but there might be someone in her family that would take in a five-year-old child. It already looks like Adam won't get custody of the boy, even if he had a suitable living arrangement, and he expects that to be you. Since that's a solid no, and it should be from your perspective, CPS needs to talk to the mother's family. It's admirable that Adam wants to step up, but as you say, he has no idea what that entails and it will be worse for the boy to live with a 20-something who can't even afford a place to live by himself. Has there been any word about her family? As far as I know, nobody else has agreed to take the kid. His mom was telling me that nobody from the girlfriend's side will even claim her body so they were trying to figure out what to do about that as well. In popular opinion, but you're the a-hole. Taking them in long-term is one thing, but helping them out until they find a better place is not a big ask. If you are worried, then write a lease. Talk to him and make sure he understands that this is just until they find a new place. I'm sure your boyfriend is having a hard time with this situation too. It's a lot bigger deal than that. Even with a lease, if Adam can't find somewhere and refuses to go, I would have to give them 30 days notice to move before starting eviction. And that would take at minimum like 30 days beyond that. So then I'm stuck for at least an extra month or two with two people in my house that I don't want there. One, an angry ex, the other, an already traumatized kid who will be taken back by CPS anyway, if Adam is evicted with no place to go and doesn't need to be exposed to any more adults fighting an instability. This is one reason why it's obvious to me that Adam isn't ready to parent this kid. He doesn't have a plan that doesn't involve other people doing most of it for him. It seems like your boyfriend is maybe going to have to decide whether he wants to take care of his nephew or be with you. I told my husband that I would be the parent of four kids if anything happened to my sister or brother-in-law when we first got together. I don't want kids and neither does he, but he married me knowing there was a chance we could end up guardians. At the end of the day, it's your life, your house, and your peace. You get to decide what you're comfortable with. No a-holes here. Also, squatters' rights are a pain in the butt. There's a show on Netflix called Worst Roommate Ever, and one of the episodes is about roommates who refused to leave and the nightmares of tenancy rights. Not a-hole, but this is the end of your relationship. Yeah, 
sadly, it probably is. I'd be happy to continue dating seriously without living together because it would still be a year or two before I'd feel comfortable getting engaged and married. And that's plenty of time to work on a solution. But if it's now or bust, I'm going to have to pick bust. Feeling pressured into things is a big deal for me. Yeah, getting forced into that kind of thing by circumstance is a slippery slope to resentment and regret for everyone involved. Not a hole, pure doing the right thing. Yes, the pressure will never end. You're absolutely making the right decision. Stop accepting calls from his mom. Block her number. You need to get yourself some new friends too. Don't let those mutual friends pressure you. If they won't accept a no for an answer now, it won't get any easier once they're in your home. Not day hole. Now for the updates. Well, decision made. I broke up with him last night. Reading all the responses made me realize that I don't actually want him to move in, with or without his nephew at this point. He did not take it well at all, but probably another reason this wasn't going to work in the end. Hopefully, he and his mom can figure something out together. Update 2. A small update for this. Some of you guys were totally right about his intentions. He dropped the idea of taking his nephew in a few days after I broke up with him and called from a mutual friend's phone to ask me to take him back. I asked him why he wasn't going to take in his nephew, and he said it would be too hard to do alone. So looks like he was expecting me to help him with the kid all along, instead of just letting them stay for a while. Without a free place to live and a built-in helper, he's not interested. I did not take him back. I think the breakup was the best thing that could have happened and I feel a lot better without him in my life. Thanks for the advice. I came from you help your family when they need it. Sounds like when things are uncomfortable, I hope he runs. My now ex wasn't my family. That's a super high bar of connection we hadn't gotten to yet. It would have been at least another year or two before I would have considered him a permanent fixture. His nephew isn't my family by extension. I'm on board with him helping his family though, just not at my expense. She made the right choice, and man do I feel bad for that kid. For sure, when you know, you know, that no one should ever, ever be pressured into having kids they don't want. People have them so casually. It's life-altering if you're doing it even half-baked. It's always life-altering, but if you're doing it half-baked, it becomes the wrong kind for all parties. Hollywood has this idea of person ends up in a weird situation, gets a kid. It's hard for a while, but eventually they pull it together and it all works out for the best. It's not realistic. Kids are hard work all day, every day. And if you don't actually like them that much, there will be times where they are having a tantrum and all you want to do is scream at them. There is no getting better along the way. They will still be high maintenance, always. Yeah. Young guy who drops the kid as soon as he doesn't have a helper? He was expecting her to do 90% of the work. Poor kid. I hope he called it in the analysis too. If she let him move in and then evicted him, she'd be stuck for two months with an angry ex and a traumatized kid. I think she knew how it would play out at that point. You know, I had a strong suspicion just from the first post that the reason he was pushing so hard to move in with Opie is because he was expecting to just pawn the kid off on her. Would have been very convenient for him to be lauded as a hero taking in his nephew, while his girlfriend does all the actual work raising the kid. So glad that she saw this coming, before she got any further involved and noped out. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my dad it feels like my siblings and I are half-siblings because of choices he made? So my parents had four children together. Me 19 female, Jaden 17 male, Remy 10 female and Jonah 6 male. Five years ago, we lost our mom. Then a year later, dad remarried. Jaden and I didn't mind, though we knew dad's wife would never be our mom. Jonah was a baby and didn't remember mom, so he started to see dad's wife as his only mom. Remy sees herself as having two moms. She's not as close to dad's wife as Jonah is, but doesn't see her as a non-parent like Jaden and I. Dad asked me and my brother not to talk about mom around Jonah, in case it interfered in the relationship he built with dad's wife. He said he would know about mom, but didn't need to hear all about her all the time. With Remy, he just said to let her ask, but try not to talk about mom around her if she didn't ask. We respected that, although we disagreed with his decision. He said we had years with mom. They were young enough that seeing his wife as mom would be healthier for them. 
He also said that his wife deserved a chance to be known as mom, since she'd be raising them for the rest of their childhood, and it would be over a decade for both of them. I love all my siblings, but I know Remy used to be frustrated with Jaden and me because we wouldn't celebrate dad's wife for Mother's Day, or because we would go to mom's grave without her, or we'd talk about mom without her. But again, that was what dad told us to do. Jaden even told dad it annoyed her, and he told us to keep sticking to our word. When she did ask, we would include her. But we also didn't share the same love for dad's wife. And with Jonah, he struggles to understand how Remy has two moms. Jaden and I are siblings, but we have a different mom. So about a year ago, he said we were his adopted siblings. And that's how we made it make sense. We started to correct him, but dad cut us off. So we left it alone. It did mean that Jonah kind of put us in boxes away from him. As became clear when for a school project recently, he drew his family with just dad and dad's wife. Remy was to decide but away from the three, and Jaden and I were completely separate. He told his teacher that we were adopted siblings, but not really since we didn't have the same parents. But dad was real family was his mom and dad. This is when dad commented to Jaden and me that it feels like we're half siblings, instead of just siblings. That our relationship is not what he thought it would be. I told him that that is because of his choices. That his desire to override mom for Jonah and for us to keep quiet around Remy unless she ask means feelings and confusion have separated us. Dad told me it wasn't fair to blame him. And if Jaden and I had just been more open to his second mother, none of this would have happened. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Your dad literally told you not to explain that you weren't adopted siblings. What did he expect? He expected his explanation to make sense to a small child when dad explained it in the most broken way possible that we were all related. He tried to say all related through him, but failed to see where confusion would come in when Jonah didn't understand different moms, multiple ones, and living together but claiming different moms. I'm pretty sure he attempted to make it simple, but simple in a full-grown man's head is not always going to be simple to a five-year-old child. Not day whole. Your dad should seek out some family therapy for all of you ASAP. I don't see that happening. Especially because he would have to face the reality that who mom is to all of us is not only different, but has led to some very complicated feelings in two young kids, as well as a feeling of being left out. Does Jonah even know that a woman you know as mom gave birth to him? He's supposed to, but does not appear to know that. Last story. Am I the a-hole for showing favoritism for my daughter and financially hurting my son? My ex-wife, 36 female, and I, 36 male, have been divorced for 7 years now. We have twins, 17 male and female. My wife and I are the stereotype of high school sweethearts. I'm more of a geek, she was a cheerleader. My son takes after my wife and my daughter take after me. When they were younger, I gave them the option of allowance. They could either spend the money on what they wanted to, or I could walk them through investments and savings. My wife was all for this at a time. We explained that they each have a set amount of money that we have put away for future schooling as well as a car fund. At first, both of my kids decided to invest it, and I started to show them how to and the risk involved. My son put us into a very risky investment against my advice and ended up losing it and decided not to do it anymore within a few weeks. My daughter started off rough but quickly got the hang of it, playing with different investments and companies. She has been in a positive most weeks. The issue is that, due to this, my daughter has saved up more money than her brother. She also likes to spend most of her time over at my house versus my son over at my ex-wife's house. My daughter's interests are more minimalistic when it comes to most things and does not spend a lot of money, though she will when she finds things she likes. She is not into fashion, rarely puts on makeup, and when she does, it is very light. Body used but nice car, etc. They just got their acceptance letters for college, and she will be able to pick any of her choices due to grades and her savings, plus our contributions. My son, on the other hand, spends most of his money when he gets it. Always has new clothes constantly, bunch of shoes, bought a new, very expensive car with payments, goes out all the time, and spends everything he gets. My son is upset because he can't go to the college he wants, because he would need to get a loan, and with that I make, he doesn't qualify for much. Now, my ex says I need to stop favoring my daughter and financially hurting my son and just paying for his college, among other things. Her and her side of the family are calling me an a-hole for not paying because you easily could. I told them that they had a choice when he was younger, and he didn't listen. 
I also pointed out the fact that if he had saved his money, he would have also been able to go where he wanted. He needed to get a job to cover costs if he wanted to go, and that life was about choices. Edited to Ed, I did keep asking him to try again through the years, but he didn't care. I gave up almost two years ago when he said he wanted to live almost full-time at his mom's house, and we had an argument that made me back off. I didn't just stop and drop it when he was really young. We did not give him his college fund. He has enough money in his college fund that he can attend a community college for four years, or a good college for two. Nothing fancy or big. The money that was invested was allowance, or spare money. My daughter would use birthday money, Christmas money, allowance, or any extra chore money. I'm not bragging, but I could send them to the best colleges for as many years as they want and fund their lives comfortably. I mean, you're talking about decisions made when they were kids. It's great that your daughter was smart with her funds, but it's very reasonable to expect that a lot of kids would, like your son, risk and lose money in that situation. A decision he made at an even younger, dumber age than he is at now shouldn't affect his ability to go to college if it's within your means to help him. Edit, I get that the son has been wasting a significant amount of money all along, but, one, as someone else mentioned, kids' brains are in the process of developing in their adolescence, and some are further behind than others in that process. Two, it's been obvious for a long time that in his youth, the son has not been capable of handling his money intelligently. Right now, he's 17 and still a dummy. But as he becomes 18, 19, 20 and older, he's going to be maturing and quite possibly become a non-dummy adult. What happened to that adult's college funds? Well, his dad knowingly gave those funds to a complete dum-dum. That would be a rewarding son for not saving. At most, let him live at home and go to community college. If you do not teach kids that actions have consequences, they will not learn. Otherwise, he is giving more to son than his daughter.